Hello, and welcome to Unk Popular Opinions, a safe space for fans of BTS and other K-pop groups to ask the tough question, what do I think of this? I'm your host, Ginger Nuna, and today I'm sharing my Just Be fan sign experience. Way back in episode nine, Parasocial Relationships, You Don't Know BTS, I talk about fan signs and my feelings about fan signs. And spoiler alert, I did not hold them in high regard. And actually, instead of trying to give you the Cliff's notes, let me just play what I said in that episode. K pop is an industry intentionally feeds parasocial relationships, but they aren't the only ones. Lots of other celebrities interact with their fans using live chat-based social media, such as Instagram Live. But there's one element I found that seems to be exclusive to K-pop, the fan sign. Being from the United States, I was familiar with the concept of meet and greets. You wait in line for a chance to say hi and take a picture with the artist. If you're lucky, they may hug you or put their arm around you. Fan signs are not meet and greets. Fan signs are meet and greets on steroids. In fan signs, you can give gifts to your bias. You can have brief conversations and even hold hands. From an objective standpoint, the whole thing makes me very uncomfortable. Idols are essentially in a hostage situation. They're required to sit and smile regardless of what fans say or do. Struggling with anxiety today? Tough luck, Min Yoongi. Hold a complete stranger's hands while you have a staring contest. Have an infantilizing request? Kim Suk Jin, a 28-year-old man, will perform like a bear in an old-timey circus. Dance, monkey, you say, as you put a ribbon in his hair and demand he perform egg yo. For context, Chance the Rapper is also 28. He's married. He has two kids. He's been working consistently for a decade. He's a grown-ass man. You know who else are grown-ass men? All the members of BTS. Yet we insist on treating them like children. For the actual children, like most idol rookies, we're telling them that their self-worth is based on their ability to make us happy. That's a huge burden to place on a kid, and probably affects them in the long term. Just look at the BTS maknae line when they talk about ARMY, compared to how the Hyung line talks about ARMY. There's often an underlying desperation that is juxtaposed against the elder's self-assurance. Virtual fan signs aren't any better. On the one hand, people can still continue to connect with their idols face-to-face. As much as parasocial relationships are billed as positive for the fan, the artists really can benefit from them. How many times in the last year have we heard Jungkook lament that he can't hear our cheers? The sadness in Jimin's eyes during these proclamations is palpable. Even RM, who objectively seems to be self-assured, appears increasingly desperate to see fans in person. Most rookie groups who debuted in 2020 have never even met their fans in person, and those who have did so with very strict protocols in place. When idols see their fans live, be it through a screen or in person, the love feels more tangible than it does through Weverse and VLive. But like many things on the internet, virtual fan signs can give way to ugliness. Just after the release of Border Carnival, Inhypen released a fan sign simulation on YouTube. I hated every minute of it. It seemed like a primer on how to sexually harass the members. Watching them squirm and redirect made me uncomfortable for them. It never ceases to amaze me the things people feel emboldened to say anonymously through a screen. The simulation is supposed to be cute and flirty, but if you said any of these things to a member on the street, you'd probably end up with a restraining order. If you said those things to a classmate or coworker, there would be disciplinary action. As I said in episode 5, think all the sexy thoughts you want, my friend, but keep them in your head. That's what I said about fan signs about a year and a half ago. Well, as you can tell from the intro to this episode, I have since attended a fan sign. I've actually had the opportunity to do two fan signs. So I thought it would be a good idea to do an episode about my whole fan sign experience. This episode is going to be part how to for people who are interested in going to a fan sign part diary so I can remember my fan sign experience and part therapy session because I didn't realize how much baggage I had going into my fan sign experience. I think one of the biggest questions is probably why did I go to a fan sign? 
Well, I don't believe in fate, except for those times where I do. (laughs) I am a big sucker for things like wishing on stars, and I hold my breath every time I go through a tunnel and make a wish. And one thing I'm really big on is fortune cookies. Now, rationally, I know fortune cookie fortunes are completely random, and there are thousands, if not millions, of that particular fortune in other cookies, but for most of my life, I've wanted to believe this fortune that I get is special just for me. And when I get a fortune that feels particularly auspicious, I like to hold on to that fortune and put a date on it and just see kind of what happens. So last year on December 20th, 2021, I received a fortune that said, a wonderful and thrilling time is in your future. I decided to hold on to that fortune because at that point, it didn't feel like anything wonderful or thrilling could possibly be in my future. I was unemployed. I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. And I guess maybe I held on to this fortune, not just because I thought maybe it was a fortune of something that would happen, but maybe by having it, I would make it happen. I would make myself do things to make this fortune come true? Well, either way, I've had a really awesome 2022 as a K-pop fan. I was able to see all of my favorite boy groups in concert in the span of one year alone, which I never thought I would see most of these groups. And the fact that I got to see all of them makes me feel so happy. And I know that I'm incredibly fortunate that I got to see them at all. One of the groups that I saw was Just Be. I've talked about them in previous episodes. They are my ultimate rookie boy group. I have followed them since pre-debut. And one day in, I think it was July, they announced that they were having a tour in Canada. Now, my first thought was, wait, you're going on tour in Canada? You haven't even toured domestically. Why an international tour? And why Canada? But my second thought was, I can go to Canada. Canada is our neighbor to the north. I I could go to this concert. So I made the choice to find a way to get to one of these concerts in Canada. And another thing that made this feel kind of like fate and it was falling into this fortune cookie fortune was they were offering a fan sign. Normally fan signs are done as a raffle. You purchase something, typically albums, um, in some cases for some artists, many albums, sometimes hundreds of albums to have your name put into the reaping bowl, if you will. And maybe if you're lucky, you've spent all this money and you will get to go to a fan sign. It's not a guarantee. In this case, they were offering the fan sign as something you could purchase along with tickets to the concert. And that just made it feel like fate. It was this once in a lifetime opportunity that there was a fan sign that I could easily get to and just buy my way in. So I thought, you know, I need to take advantage of this opportunity. But I had this voice in the back of my head that made me feel a little uneasy about the idea of attending a fan sign. What I was most concerned about was my age. I am a quote unquote older K pop fan. I especially feel older with the groups that I follow because most of the groups I follow are fourth gen. So these idols, some of them are young enough that they could be my children. And I'm older, but I'm not typical grandmother age. If I were older in a grandmotherly way and went to a fan sign, I think it would be perceived as, 
Oh, that's so cute. This woman is so old, but she loves us and she loves K-pop. Oh, but I'm younger than that and too old to be these idols' peers. So I felt like maybe this wasn't going to be a good idea. And I had a little bit of an experience to kind of back this up. I saw TXT and an hypen by myself. And both times when I looked around at the audience, I did not see any adults who were there by themselves. I didn't see anyone who was blatantly over the age of 25 who was alone. I saw a lot of people my age and older who were chaperoning younger fans, but I didn't see anybody who was just an adult who was there enjoying this music. And I even remember when I saw in Hypen, I saw a woman by herself and she looked to be a little bit older than me. And I said, oh, did you come by yourself? And she kind of looked at me weird and said, no, I'm here with my daughter and her friends. And that just made me feel even more aware that I might be the odd person out in this situation. And it's not even just that I was feeling out of place in these situations. In terms of the fan sign, I was concerned about making the members feel uncomfortable. I remember being in my early 20s and feeling like even people in their late 20s were a world apart. Now that I'm in my 30s, I look back and I think, oh, you know, there are huge differences, but we could still hang out. But if I were in my early 20s, I don't know how I would feel if someone who is more than a decade older than me showed an interest in talking to me. I think another thing is it's important to be aware of how you are perceived in certain situations. An example is my husband loves animated kids movies. And before our kid was born, he would only go to animated movies in the middle of a weekday when kids would be at school because we have this perception of seeing a man alone at a place for children and thinking this is shady, something nefarious is going to happen. And he felt uncomfortable that people would think this about him, but he also didn't want to make families feel uncomfortable with his presence. So I was torn between this, am I just making myself feel old versus am I genuinely possibly making these idols feel uncomfortable by literally forcing them to talk to me? In the end, I reached out to my friend Sasha, who has been a K-pop fan for much, much longer than I have, and said, would it be weird if I went to this? And she said, no, just do what makes you happy. And so I listened to Sasha's advice, and I bought my ticket to the Just Be fan sign. With this specific fan sign, there were two options available. There was the VIP option and the S tier option. VIP cost more than the S tier because with VIP, you got to have an individual photo with the members. With S tier, you got to have a photo with yourself and five other people who had come to the fan sign. I thought, well, the big thing for me is that I want to have the interaction experience. I don't really care about the photograph itself. I would be fine having five strangers in my photo, so I'm going to save a few bucks and get the S-tier version. After purchasing my fan sign experience, I started doing my preparations. I think the thing I prepared most was what I was going to wear to the fan sign. And this was another thing where I started to realize how in my head I was because choosing this outfit, it was it was hard. And I 
worked on choosing my outfit almost up until the last minute. When I did the episode where I recapped my trip to see Permission to Dance LA, I talked about just dress for comfort. You know, it's not a first date. You're not going to have a urinate moment. The group isn't going to see you. But this was a case where even though I did not anticipate having a your name moment, I knew that they would see me. And I really agonized over what I was going to wear. And I think a big part of that was my age concerns. So I went back and forth thinking, do I try to dress younger? Do I almost try to fool them into thinking I'm not in my 30s? And I quickly realized that I have no idea what is trendy. Not a clue. I wouldn't be able to dress myself in a trendy way. But also, I was driving straight to the fan sign. I wasn't going to be able to go to a hotel and freshen up or anything like that. So I needed to have something that I was comfortable crossing international borders in. I pretty much narrowed it down to a dress and a sweater tank top combo with jeans. And I liked the dress because I feel really good in that dress. I feel like it highlights my best assets. And by assets, I mean boobs. Um, But I have realized I'm going to be in the car for several hours. I don't really think I would be comfortable by the time I got there in this outfit. So I ended up going with the sweater, tank top, jeans option. And that was a good choice for me. It ended up being something that when I was there in the moment, I wasn't focused on trying to adjust anything. I wasn't focused on my outfit itself. I was able to just wear it. Did I have moments when I was there and I saw what other people were wearing? Did I feel a little weird? A little, a little bit, I'll be honest. But that happens to me almost all the time when I go to concerts. I see these fans who have come up with these really cool themed outfits and I think, wow, why didn't I do that? And then I remember, I don't think I want to do that. If somebody gave me the outfit and said, go wear this, maybe I would do it. But that's not actually something I want to do. And I don't need to put this pressure on myself to dress a certain way. Another way that I prepared for the fan sign was I thought up some questions that I would ask the members. And I didn't write anything down. I just had it in my brain. I had an individual question for each member that was catered to those members. But then I also had just some some general questions because I had seen with fan sign videos that I would probably get to have some time with each member and ask questions. The way I expected the fan sign to go, what I'd seen in videos people have put on YouTube, um, is that the members are sitting at a table or they're all in a row in some way. And all the people who are attending the fan sign kind of sit in the audience. And when it's your turn, you get to go up and you go down the line. It's almost like a receiving line at a wedding. And each member typically has a handler, if you will, the person who lets you know, okay, your time is up. It's time to move on to that next member. So I prepared myself by having these questions in my mind about what I would ask. Another thing that I anticipated for the fan sign, um, just to go over what my expectations were. I also expected that there would be a performance of a song, maybe two, just because that's something I'd seen online where the fan sign starts with the members all talking to the audience and having a fun moment and performing a song or two and then doing the fan sign portion. 
And so that's what I was expecting going into my fansign experience. The final thing I prepared for my fansign was what I wanted signed. Every fan sign is different. In most fan signs, they will sign the album that you purchased to get into the fan sign. In this case, because it wasn't a lottery, we were able to have other things signed, but you had to make some kind of merch purchase in order to get an autograph. I knew that what I wanted signed was my album cover for their debut album, Just Burn. So I brought that, and just in case for some reason they needed to know my name, I wrote my name on a post-it note, and then I also wrote it out in Hangul. Of course, it's not going to be exact because my given name is not a Korean name, but it was something I could break down sound-wise so they could at least be familiar with, oh, this is how you say this name. So I had that in my purse, ready to go. Finally, the day of the fan sign arrived, and I'm pretty much just going to go through what happened in chronological order. Some of these things I think will probably be pretty universal for some fan signs, and some of these things will never happen again, but just so you get a full picture of my experience, I'm just going to tell you pretty much everything. The event itself was scheduled to start at 1 o'clock. We received an email a couple of days before the fan sign that said the event is from 1 to 5. So I decided to get to the venue. Um, It was a hotel at 1230 because I knew there would be people who probably lined up hours before. But one, I did not want to leave any earlier than I had to to drive there. But two, I didn't really care where I was in line. I had purchased my fan sign experience and was going to get it. So it didn't really matter to me if I was first, middle, last. I knew I was going to get in there and that's all that mattered. So I got there at 1230 and we were all lining up outside the hotel. And it wasn't a bunch of people. I was kind of surprised by how few people. I think I was maybe 30th in line. And the thing that was interesting about this line was it was actually a line for two fan signs. The tour in Canada was actually a co-tour between Just B and Yoon Jisung. Yoon Jisung was the leader of the group 101, and now he works as a solo artist. So this line was made up of people who were there to see Just B and people who were there to see Yoon Jisung. And we were all mixed together and given wristbands. And on each wristband, that's where they would note which artist you were there to see. When I was in line, I was behind this really lovely young lady. I did not get consent to give her name, so I gave her the nickname Alexa because her hair and her makeup, she just looked so much like the idol Alexa to me. So I was there with Alexa, and I was able to chat with her and get to know her a little bit, and she was soon joined by her friend Christiana. We talked about, oh, is this your first fan sign? What kind of things are you expecting? And in the end, I actually stayed in contact with Christiana and asked her about her fan sign experience because I wanted to share some of her input because I could tell when I met them that they were younger. I wasn't sure how how young they were, but eventually I kind of pieced out that they were in college. They were college age. In fact, I think Christiana was saying this was the first time that she'd ever skipped school. And I told her, it's okay. And now that I think about it, I'm not really the right person to be giving advice about college since I have my degree and I don't use it. So hopefully Christiana missing that one day of college this was not completely detrimental to your career path. 
But I was talking with them, and what Christiana said she was expecting for the fan sign was a lot of what I was expecting. She thought it would be like a Korean fan sign where you sit and talk with the artist. And of course, because it's a fan sign, you would get them to sign your album. And I also asked her, like, how did you decide what you wore to this? Because her outfit was super cute. And she told me she wore what she thought was her personal aesthetic. She thought it would be best for Just Be to see her what in what she was most confident in. And that makes so much sense. And of course, it worked out well that she was young and conventionally attractive and trendy. But I think she really hit the nail on the head by saying you need to wear what you feel good in. As one o'clock came closer, um, one of the organizers came out and told us, okay, so if you are here for the Just Be fan sign, that's going to start at three o'clock. If you're here for Yoon Ji Sung, go ahead and stay. That starts at one. And Alexa, Christiana, and I were very confused because we'd all gotten the same email saying this starts at one. So now, with us coming back at 2.30, we were faced with an hour and a half to kill. So we all went our separate directions. And really having that hour and a half worked out to my advantage because one of the things that was not made very clear was that the merch had to be purchased with cash. And I didn't have Canadian cash, so I needed to go find an ATM and get some money. So in the end, it worked out, but it's just not what we were expecting. Eventually, 2.30 rolled around, and we all rejoined into our line in front of the hotel. And I looked at Alexa and Christiana, and they had taken their break as a chance to go to a stationery store and get those little flags that you put in books where you need to temporarily mark something. And they were marking their photo books that they wanted signed with these flags, putting the flag with the member's name on the page where they wanted them to sign. And that just made so much sense. It was one of those blatantly obvious but also incredibly brilliant things. And while they were setting these up, I thought about my album that I wanted Just Be to sign. And I realized the album I had picked was black. And so for some reason... I hadn't thought about what are they going to sign this with? Because the only answer for a black album is a silver Sharpie. But I didn't bring a silver Sharpie. And why would they have multiple colors of Sharpies up there for different people's things? And so I started to get a really, I didn't panic panic, but I was nervous. And Alexa and Christiana were super sweet and gave me a flag so I could use my photo book and pick a picture that I liked where the background was light enough that the members could sign with a black Sharpie and still be seen. So I put my little flag in and that was ready to go. And we chatted a little more about how we were excited. And eventually the organizers came and broke up our one big line into two smaller lines, uh, the VIP line and the S line. And all three of us were part of the S group. So I got to just follow them over and we got to go in almost immediately because most of the people in front of us had been VIP holders instead of S holders. And they were sending the S group before the VIP group. So we went in with the organizer and three other people. And a couple of them had their moms with them. And we all smushed together in an elevator and rode it up to the penthouse. And when we got to the penthouse, that's where they had the merch table. And I had gone into this knowing what merch I wanted to buy. I wanted to get a light stick. And I wanted to get a hat. And the hat came in three different colors. It came in pink, white, and black. And 
I really, really agonized over which hat to buy because I don't usually wear hats, but I thought it would be a good idea to have a baseball style cap for the summer to protect my face because I burn like none other. And I decided, okay, I'm going to get the white one. I think the white one will look coolest. So I bought my light stick and I bought my hat. And as I was buying my hat, the event organizer came over and said, oh, you bought a hat, so come get your autograph. And I was really confused because I looked around and most of the people I'd come up with were already gone, which meant, okay, they're already doing their meet and greet. Um, And there was a new group coming in. So I thought, oh, I guess it's my time to go meet Just Be. And on the other side of this merch table, they had one of those movable temporary walls like you'd find in an elementary school classroom. And on the other side of this wall at a table was Just Be. They were just sitting there waiting on the other side of this wall. And I went around and it was just really jarring to go in and be face-to-face with them. They were sitting just at a table in a row, and I thought, oh, well, I guess we're not getting any kind of performance, and we're just meeting them right now, (laughs) okay? And I had my purse with me and my coat, and my hands were really full, so I set down the hat I just bought to reorganize stuff, And Songu was the first member in line. He just grabbed my hat and started signing it. (laughs) And I thought, but but that's my hat. I I I wanted to wear the hat. Please give me my hat back. But, you know, damage was done. And I thought, well, I guess I'm not gonna be wearing this hat, and I will not be getting my book signed. Um, they're gonna be signing this hat. So the hat made its way down the line. And what was most unexpected for me about this part of the experience was there weren't handlers. There wasn't really any space between the members. They were pretty much sitting shoulder to shoulder. And as Sangu is signing my hat, I realize, is this my time to talk to him? And everything just flew out of my brain. So I think I said something like, oh, are you enjoying Canada? (laughs) And he said, yes. And it just felt so incredibly awkward. And then he handed my hat over to the next person in line, who was Ganu. And so I realized this wasn't going to be like the fan sign experience I expected, where you get a minute or so and then ushered on to the next person. It's you get as long as it takes them to sign this hat. Once the hat moves, you move. And so I was just very quickly ushered on to Ganu, and my brain really went blank at that point because Ganu is the reason I got into Just Be in the first place. He was my favorite contestant on Island, and when I heard he was going to be debuting, I followed his debut group. And my brain was blank, but it went not blank enough. It came back just enough for me to say, I've really liked you since Island. I'm glad that you got to debut. And he said thank you. And I just felt so awkward because I don't really like meeting people. Why did I go to a meet and greet if I don't like meeting people, listeners? What was I thinking? But here I am in this situation. And after Ganu, um, it went down to Bane. And then after Bane was JM, then DY, then Lim Jimin. And I don't really have any anecdotes for those members because I felt so awkward. I didn't know what to say. I felt weird making eye contact with them because they were all so attractive and happy and they were in the right mindset. I just was not. So all of the questions that I had prepared, all of the ideas I had out the window, 
It was very, very fast. It was both the longest and the shortest experience of my life because when I'm standing there staring at them sign this hat, I just couldn't think of what to say and I felt so awkward. So after they all signed my hat, it was time to do our group photo with the six of us and the members. And I thought maybe it would be kind of like a Disneyland situation where there is a professional photographer who in the end gives you a code or a link to where you get your picture. That's not what happened. They took Alexa's cell phone and someone else's cell phone and just took cell phone pictures of us. And as we were leaving, we had to find a way to get these photos from these other people's phones. So I didn't know how to airdrop a stranger. It was a whole thing. And thank God Alexa was so patient with me. And eventually I got my picture and it's really cute. I'm glad that I was in the same group as Christiana and Alexa, just because it's nice to have that memory of the two people who I met in this situation. I think, though, that I would be lying if I said I left the fan sign feeling excited and happy and fulfilled. <laughs> Is that even the right word? I was, I was feeling pretty disappointed. And I think that disappointment came from both the lack of communication with the group that organized the fan sign, just the whole show up at one, oh, just kidding, show up at three, now we're going to split your groups, now we're not going to give you any warning and throw you in front of the artist. But also, in my attempts to prepare myself, I think I gave myself some unrealistic expectations. I wasn't in the best mindset to go with the flow and enjoy the moment as it was. So... I think a lot of the disappointment was probably based just on me because I know that Alexa and Christiana had pretty much the exact same experience I did. And even though it felt rushed, they were really, really happy about the experience. So I think it was just how I was seeing this experience and not necessarily how this experience was for everyone else. After the fan sign was the concert the following day, and I know that this episode is about my fan sign experience, but I wanted to bring the concert in because fate brought me a new friend who is perfect for this episode. I met a lovely woman named Naru, and what really drew me to her was the fact that I could tell she was an adult. Um, She was there and I knew she was around my age. And I realized that she was there with a friend, but it was just the two of them. So finally, for the first time for me, I was encountering other adult women who were following a fourth gen group and who were enjoying that group without having to chaperone somebody younger than them. So it was really nice to meet Naru, and we stayed in contact after the concert. And I asked her how she felt about fan signs. And, you know, since you're also an adult, would you go to a fan sign? And she told me absolutely not, um, that fan signs were too expensive. And She just didn't like the creepiness of having a photo of herself because she's in her early 40s and these idols are in their 20s. She thought maybe the idea of having the photo would be cool, but really only if it was one of her alt groups. And hearing her say this made me feel really seen. It did not make me feel like I'd made the wrong choice, but... I'd been wondering if my fears about my age had been irrational, and it was nice to hear that another older fan had the same concerns that I did. So I probed a little more and asked her, well, is it weird that 
I went to a fan sign and she told me no it's not because just because something is creepy or weird for her doesn't mean it is for everybody else and that she tends to be harder on herself than other people and what made me feel really good was Naru telling me that she felt good by hearing that I went to a fan sign that maybe if that opportunity came up she would take that chance and go to a fan sign. So I thought that was really cool. The concert itself was amazing. If you get a chance to see a rookie group, I highly suggest it. The experience was wild. The parasocial element was truly bonkers because you're in this situation where you're in such a small group that you can see the artist and there is the high possibility that they are on stage and they can see you. So it was just a lot of fun. Great, great job. I was just in love with Just Be even more than I already was. Like I was so in love that they have a Latin America tour coming up and I went home and I was looking up how much would it cost for me to fly to Peru and I've never had that kind of dopamine rush after seeing anyone where I just wanted to almost become a groupie and follow them well eventually you know I got back down to earth touched some grass and realized you don't have the PTO nor the money to go to Peru (laughs) so that's not gonna happen But I was able to relive part of the concert just because Twitter, either because the algorithm is amazing or incredibly creepy, kept suggesting people to me who had been at that same concert. And so I got to watch their fan cams. And that was a lot of fun to be able to relive this concert that I'd been to. Something else that kept popping up on Twitter was the opportunity to try for video fan signs. Just B had a comeback a couple of weeks ago. And with a lot of groups, with that comeback comes that onslaught of fan signs and video fan signs. And I thought, do I want to try for a video fan sign? Because my in-person fan sign experience had been so disappointing and I felt like I had learned from that opportunity, I thought, well, maybe it would be fun to do a video fan sign. I had been thinking about doing a podcast episode about my fan sign experience and I thought, well, this would be great for the podcast. This would be a great way to round out my experience especially because my initial thoughts about fan signs are more related to video fan signs. With most comebacks, there are several in-person and video fan sign opportunities. What will happen is the group that you're following, so in this case, Just Be, will retweet the information for those fan signs, the companies that are hosting those fan signs. They're usually music shops that are both in Seoul, but also have a web presence. So they can have both an in-person fan sign event and a video fan sign event. And there are lots of different opportunities. For Just Be Alone, they had Nemo's, they had Make Star, they had K-Town For You, they had JJ Muse, and a whole bunch of other ones. So there were a lot of potential fan sign opportunities. And what you do in these cases, it's the traditional fan sign lottery. You go to the website of your choosing and you purchase an album, or if you want more chances, albums, and give them your information for the chance to be added to this fan sign. I narrowed down my possible fan signs by both when the fan signs were happening, but also how easy it was to apply for the fan sign. 
with fan signs, of course, they're happening in Seoul, typically in the evening or the afternoon. So you have to do the math about, well, when is this fan sign going to be happening in my time zone? Is it going to conflict with my work schedule? Is this a time where I can wake up in the middle of the night and attend a fan sign? Another thing that I was looking for was a fan sign that I could apply for that I understood the application process. What I mean is most of these websites are in Korean. And even using the translator function on a phone or through Google only tells you so much. So I really combed through and picked a website where they offered the chance to apply for the fan sign in English just because I wanted to know exactly what I was getting myself into and also that I was giving the correct information. Because you're not only applying for the fan sign, you are purchasing the album. And if I gave incorrect information, I might be spending $50 because shipping is insane and I wouldn't even get my album because I filled it out incorrectly. After I chose the website that I wanted to apply through, I had to download Kakao Talk. <laughs> Kakao Talk, if you don't know, is the video and text messaging app that is widely used in Korea. It's actually pretty much a monopoly. It's it's very questionable, but almost all video fan signs go through Kakao Talk. And I'd felt really nervous about signing up for Kakao Talk because I didn't know if it was going to be another case where I'm stumbling through and trying to translate Korean. But I went into the Apple App Store. It was completely in English. It was super easy to sign up. And so I had my Kakao Talk ID. I went to the website that I wanted to order my album from, put in my information, thought I'm going to buy one album at the very least. I will get my album at most, I'm going to get a chance to have my album autographed and get a fan sign. And in true Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fashion, my one entry got me into this fan sign. And I was shocked, <laughs> mostly because the information about who gets the fan sign came out at a really late hour. And so I was half asleep when I saw it. And I thought, no, that can't be true. But it was. Because the way a lot of the companies will let you know that you have won the fan sign is they won't reach out to you individually right away. When you put your name in the drawing for the fan sign, they will tell you on this website at this time, we will post the names of the winners. And I went through the list and there was my name. And I was just floored that I was going to have this opportunity. I also had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't know what to do to prepare for this kind of fan sign. And another moment of fate intervened. I was looking through the list of other video call winners, and I recognized a name. There was a name that I had seen many times since the concert, but I didn't follow this person. I didn't know this person. This person didn't know me. Her name is Nanda, and I actually first heard Legend of Nanda at the concert because when you go to a concert, there's usually this unofficial dick measuring contest about who came the farthest for the concert. And I was talking to a woman who had come from Texas, and I was saying, wow, that's so far. And she said, oh, not compared to the girl who came all the way from Ireland. And it was just like, someone came from Ireland for this, and that was Nanda. So I heard about Nanda at the concert, not by name or anything, but she was also showing up in my Twitter a lot because she had been at the same concert I was at. And I had actually already visited her profile and looked at her pictures and everything that she had posted. And looking through, I realized like she was a really big Just Be fan, but she also had done a lot 
of fan signs, not just the fan sign that we both attended, but video fan signs. And I thought, you know, it wouldn't hurt me to reach out to her and see if maybe she'll help me out. So I messaged her on Twitter and she was so, so nice to me. She was great. She answered all of my questions. I actually sent her a questionnaire about her experience at the Canada fan sign. And what I found really interesting was we had vastly different fan sign experiences. And I think a lot of that comes down to her being VIP and me being S tier. So she was there pretty much by herself and I was there in that group of six. And so even though for her, she still found the interactions to be pretty rushed and she didn't have a chance to say much, she still did get a chance to like share individual messages with Ganu and Bane complimented her outfit and she was able to return the compliment. And really the rush didn't happen until like toward the end with Lim Jimin and D.Y., And I think part of that was her having that VIP experience, but I think also part of it was that she knew what she was doing going into this. It wasn't exactly like the fan signs that she had attended, but she at least had enough structure from previous fan signs to adapt to the situation that she was put in. Like I did with Naru, I also asked her about her opinion of older K-pop fans attending fan signs. And I had been really excited because I thought, here's Nanda. Nanda's in her probably mid-20s. She will be able to give me that fresh, almost Gen Z look. And I was so wrong because it turns out Nanda is almost exactly the same age as me. Our birthdays are actually really close together. And that was so wild to me. Because I knew that she was going to all of these fan signs for fourth gen groups. And she didn't have any hangups or any qualms. And I think a big part of that, when I asked her, like, do you feel weird about doing this? She basically told me, I don't think it's weird for older people to enjoy interactions with people they admire as long as their interactions are being respectful. The weird thing is when fans, regardless of their age, don't respect the rules and the boundaries that are set up. She also explained that when she attends a fan sign or a meet and greet, she is there for the artist because she likes the artist. She's there to support them. And I had always assumed people were coming into fan signs with a your name mentality, with a faux relationship, parasocial mentality. And Nanda goes into fan signs with more of a professional mentality. She is there just to express her gratitude to these artists, to make sure that they feel supported. She's there giving them a tangible experience that lets them know that what they are doing matters to someone. I asked her, well, when you meet younger idols, do you feel this need to come off as younger or hide your age? And she told me, no, she doesn't. She's not going to change how she presents herself to please other people. While a lot of people, including myself, think she's younger than she is, once someone finds out that she is in her 30s, she's not embarrassed by it. She never tried to hide it. She never tries to look younger. Because she doesn't care what other people think. She is there to have a good time and appreciate good music. And listeners, I every time I start to think I'm not not self-actualized, but I've figured out how to be an adult, I meet someone like Nanda who is an inspiration to me. There are so many people who talk about having a I don't give a fuck attitude. This woman is that person. She does what makes her happy. She goes in with the headspace of, if I'm not hurting anyone, why shouldn't I? And she doesn't try to fit in with these preconceived notions, especially in this context about age. 
And I was really glad that I found her because it made me think even more about how I'd agonized so much about my age and my outfit and how these things mattered so much to me. And here she was doing fan signs. She's met Just Be multiple times. She's had multiple video calls with them. And a few of the members actually recognize her at this point. And she's just so comfortable in being herself. It's something that I know I aspire to. And I think probably we all should aspire to. After connecting with Nanda, I started my preparations for the video fan sign. One of the things that was most important to me was being able to record the fan sign. Technically, you're not supposed to, but people do. And I wanted to have a record of this fan sign. And it was not as easy to record as I thought it would be. I use an iPhone. And when you do a screen record, it doesn't record any sound from outside the phone itself. So the way it works with Kakao Talk is you can't be recording before you start the phone call. It won't let you. So what you have to do with Kakao Talk and an iPhone is accept the phone call on Kakao Talk and quickly turn on the screen record function on your iPhone. And that will record everything that's on screen. So that's great for the video call. But then you need to add in the sound. There are several ways to do this. What I chose and was easiest for me was I hooked up my podcasting mic and I put it underneath my phone where the sound output is and connected it to my computer and ran it through GarageBand. And so while I'm having a conversation on my phone through Kakao Talk, the sound is also being picked up through the microphone, being pushed into my computer as a sound file. And after everything is said and done, I can add the video file and the sound file together. I also joined the ranks of the ring light owners. I know I'm like two years late, but I had no reason to Zoom call anyone during the pandemic. So I did buy a ring light just because I wanted to feel good about how I presented myself for this phone call. And what Christiana and what Nanda said really stuck with me about doing what you're comfortable in. And by being comfortable, that's when you will present your best self. I knew I would feel my best if I had some kind of lighting going on. It wasn't as bad as that episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where Sweet D just shines massive amounts of light on herself to erase all of her imperfections. But it was enough that made me feel good, especially because I know nothing about using filters and I barely know how to apply makeup as it is. Another thing I had to prepare that I didn't realize until I talked to Nanda was my passport. When you do a fan sign, both in person and online, they will ask for identification. And because I'm not a Korean national, I don't have one of the several forms of ID that they accept. I have a passport. And I haven't done any digging into this, but before applying for a fan sign, if you don't have a passport... I highly suggest doing some digging and finding out what forms of ID they do accept because it would really suck for you to get a chance to attend a fan sign and not be able to go because you don't have the proper identification. Once again, I also had to think about what outfit am I going to wear. And it was a lot less stressful, both because I was feeling more confident in myself after talking with Nanda but also because Zoom rules applied, so I could wear pajama bottoms and no one would know. All that mattered was my upper half. And even with that, the way the camera was, you barely see what I'm wearing in the video. And I ended up wearing the exact same thing that I wore to the in-person fan sign, but I mostly chose to do that because the colors that I wore 
were the concept colors for the most recent Just Be album. Now, they happened to be my wedding colors, and that's why I had them. But I thought, you know, if I'm wearing this, maybe we'll have a talking point of, oh my gosh, you and I match, because I'd seen for a couple of fan signs that the guys had been wearing items that were teal or purple. Finally, because I knew I was going to get a minute and a half with each member, no matter what, I prepared some questions. I had to think about questions that were appropriate to ask because something I found out when I was applying for the fan sign is if you ask something that is inappropriate or say something that is inappropriate, the call can be terminated. One of the big things that I took issue with for fan calls is that I felt like it was just an opportune time to sexually harass the members. But the truth is, is if you start to do something like that where it's really obvious, they can shut you down immediately. And I wasn't going to ask anything completely bonkers. The most like hard-hitting question I really wanted to ask was, Ganu, how did it feel to get fucked over by a technicality on island? But I wasn't going to do that. Instead, I wrote an individual question for each member. And here is what I wrote. This is what I wanted to ask them. I wanted to ask Lim Jimin what he missed about his solo career now that he's in a group. I wanted to ask JM if he still talked to anyone from Island. I wanted to ask DY what the biggest differences were between being in Just B versus being in his last group, One the Nine. I wanted to ask Song Woo if he wanted to do an audition program because all the other members have been on some kind of audition program and he's the only one who didn't go through one. And I wanted to ask Ganu what his favorite memory was from Island. I didn't have anything specific for Bane because I just had this gut instinct that I was going to be able to talk to him and we were just going to roll with it. And I didn't have anything really hard hitting to ask him. So those were the individual questions that I wanted to ask. I also prepared some basic questions that I could ask any of them if we had filler time. I was going to ask them, if you weren't an idol and you were done with school, what job would you have? Who's your favorite girl group? You do lots of cover songs. What's your favorite cover that you've done? What hair color would you like to try? You're doing a tour in Latin America. Have you learned any Spanish or Portuguese? And what is your favorite song on this album? So I had a whole list of questions. And what I did was I wrote these questions on a giant post-it note and stuck them underneath my little recording studio that I made. I had my post-it. I was ready to ask my questions. I had my setup. I was good to go. The day of the fan sign went like this. My fan sign started at 3 a.m. my local time. Saturday morning. So I set an alarm to get up at 1.30. I figured an hour and a half was probably more time than I needed, but I didn't want to feel rushed at all. And I wanted to have that time to just be chill and get ready. I'd already set up my recording studio, but I wanted to have time to do my makeup, review my questions, make sure that my cats were not going to photobomb me, all that stuff. But waking up at 1.30 didn't start out as calm as I expected it to because the company that was running the fan sign had reached out to me through Kakao Talk to verify my identity. And they'd reached out to me at midnight, my time. So I'd been asleep. So I wake up at 1.30 and I see that they have called me multiple times and I'm trying not to panic thinking, oh my gosh, if they haven't seen my passport already, am I not going to get to join? Am I still going to get to join? So I calmed myself down enough, took some big breaths, called them back and thankfully at 1.30 they were just fine with verifying my identity then. But that is something I would also warn people about for a video fan sign is they will probably check your identity before the event itself 
And that might be a couple of hours. It might be in the middle of the night. And I'd had my phone on silent so I could sleep. So always be prepared on the day or so leading up that someone from the company might call you to verify your identity. After I verified that I was who I told them I was, I got my makeup on, I put on my outfit. I listen to Yuna a lot when I am trying to stay calm just because her music is really chill to me. Even the stuff that's faster paced, she has just the most soothing voice. I highly suggest checking her out. Finally, three o'clock rolled around and I knew that I wasn't going to go exactly at three. There were 30 fan sign winners and I was toward the middle. So I knew that it would be a little while before I actually had a chance to talk with anyone. But I wanted to be ready just in case because when it was my turn, they were just going to call me. So while I was waiting, I practiced turning on the screen record on my phone in a very quick and wily manner. I tested my sound to make sure that my microphone was picking up what was coming from my phone, but also picking up me. Just kind of fiddling with all these last minute things. And finally, at 322, they called. The person who called was someone from the, uh, from the event, and when they call, their camera wasn't turned on. What I did was as soon as they called me and I pushed the accept button, I turned on my screen record and I turned on my audio on my computer. I was recording for a long time with nothing, but still it was there and it was ready. And so I sat and I kind of stared at myself. <laughs> on my phone screen for a while because they were getting me set up for my turn, but it wasn't quite my turn yet. My turn happened around 328. I waited about five minutes before my turn. And I look at my phone and all of a sudden there's Ganu and it's my turn to talk to him. And the way it worked was I talked to each member and they handed the phone to the next member down the line to the very end. One of the reasons I wanted to record my fan sign was because I knew I would do this episode and I wanted to share my recording so people could kind of see what went well and what didn't because a lot of the fan sign clips that you'll see online are just the moment where they're talking to someone. So my clip, it's the actual whole fan sign experience from when I'm waiting for Ganu to pick up till the end of the fan call. So you can see how it goes getting from one member to the next. I've uploaded this on my YouTube And I put a link for it in today's show notes. And this way you can see, you know, this went well. This didn't go well. Is it embarrassing? Yes. (laughs) Would I have done it differently? Yes. But it is what it is. I think the big things, the big takeaways that I had were don't overestimate how much English they speak. I definitely did that. I thought that I had broken things down into basic enough English that it could be understood, but I was still overestimating how much each member spoke, especially Sangu. I had a really hard time communicating with him, and so that made our time together feel incredibly awkward for both of us. I think if I were to do this again, I would write out my questions word for word in a place where I could read them. What I did was I wrote down keywords to jog my memory, but by doing that, I ended up using a lot of stereotypical American English speech patterns, and so I was adding in words that didn't need to be there. I was using words that had less complicated synonyms that I should have been using, and would have been easier for the members to understand. Another thing I could have done if I were going the Nanda route and expressing gratitude, I could have written out what I wanted to say and put it through a translator and either 
read it to them in very broken, grammatically incorrect Korean. I've also seen people write what they want to say and then hold it up for the camera. I also think I would have stuck with more very basic questions. The questions I wanted to ask weren't personal, but they were not something that was to be expected. And I needed to go into this with the mindset of a fan, not the mindset of a journalist, if you will, and wanting to get an insider scoop, which is not exactly what I wanted to do, but I thought it would be cool to ask them something that they haven't heard before. And after being in this situation, I realized that wasn't the time or the place. Even with the members who do speak English, it just wasn't the right thing. So, for example, with Ganu, I asked him, what's your favorite girl group? And he gave me the most idle answer of, oh, I only think about Only B. I don't think about that. Only B is just B's fandom name. And my brain is thinking, bullshit, you don't have a favorite girl group. You are the master of girl group dances. But I should have known that that would be a touchy question that they probably wouldn't be able to answer. The company wouldn't want them to answer because it ruins the parasocial aspect. By naming any contemporary girl group, they are opening themselves up for rumors and possible scandal. So even though it felt like an innocuous question, it wasn't a question that I should have asked. So I really needed to think about questions that were easy to answer and were very almost blasé, if you will. Again, if you want to know exactly what happened with the fan sign itself, check out my YouTube. It's there in all of its glory for you to see just how it went. And I hope that it's somewhat helpful or at the very least entertaining. The final part of my fan sign experience was editing together the video and the audio from the fan sign. And if this is something that you are interested in doing and you use an iPhone and a Mac, check out my YouTube because it's hard to do an audio tutorial for something that's so visual. But if that is something you would like to learn about how to edit together your fan sign video, pop on over. The link is in the description. And I am happy to show you what I finally figured out after a whole lot of trial and error because I didn't know what I was doing. But I think in the end, it actually turned out pretty good. With that, my fan sign experience has come to a close, and I'm actually feeling really content. It kind of feels like I finished a good book and all the loose ends are tied up. My video fan sign didn't go exactly how I wanted it to, but I don't feel the need to redo it or to try for another video fan sign. I feel like I have had a good enough experience. What I preferred in the end was definitely the video fan sign. I like that because I felt like I had more control. There were things, of course, that were out of my control, like my internet, their internet, not knowing exactly how well we could communicate with each other. But the things I could control, like my location, how much time I needed to set up, I'm not a big talker. Usually when I'm preparing for something, I would prefer to be quiet if it's at all possible. And so I didn't have to worry about dealing with other people or how my actions were affecting another person's experience. I could just really focus on myself. What I think is interesting is Nanda said the complete opposite. She's more comfortable interacting with people in person, and so she gets less anxious with in-person fan signs than fan calls, especially because fan calls, usually you're waiting for your turn by yourself, and with the fan sign, you are there with other fans that you can interact with. After doing both, I would say there are merits to both in-person fan signs, if you have the opportunity, and video fan signs. It's really 
a personal preference. Now that I've attended fan signs, has my opinion changed since episode nine? Absolutely. That was definitely a case of me judging something as an outsider instead of being able to judge something through my experience. What I discovered through this whole experience is fan signs are a lot more regulated than I realized. They are being monitored by the company. Either they're watching your video or being there physically with the artist. So if you start to do something that is inappropriate or invasive, there's someone there to stop it. Also, because they have that identity check before the fan sign, the organizers have seen my passport. So if I made any inappropriate choices, they could flag me however they see fit, whether that be ban me from future fan signs. I don't know if there are times where they have to take legal action, but there's no anonymity. It feels like there's anonymity, but there isn't any anonymity. Another thing I hadn't taken into consideration is that idols go into this knowing it's a part of their job. When they are training to be idols, they go through media training, they are ready for this. It's not like approaching a celebrity on the street and just popping in while they're having dinner and being a surprise and being really invasive. This is a chunk of time that was set aside where the idol knows they will be interacting with someone. So they might be having an off day and they might not be giving 110% or they might be going through the motions, but at least it's not like being approached in the real world. They know what's coming. They know that they have systems in place to protect them. And with how Nanda describes her fan sign experiences, I see how they could be incredibly beneficial to the artist. Something that I hear from a lot of celebrities is that they don't go on the internet because you're going to find a lot of vitriol and you might have to sift through all of the negative to find even the small amount of positive. So a lot of celebrities just don't even mess with social media or anything like that. They might not know what is being said. Fan signs are a great chance for fans to express to the artist how they feel. And the artist can find out in the safest way possible that they are appreciated and that their work does matter. One of my favorite fan sign videos that I have seen was a MOA, that's TXT's fandom, was telling Subin that he was such a good leader and that it must be a lot of weight on his shoulders and how much that MOA appreciated what Subin does for TXT. And Subin just starts crying. And those are the kinds of moments that are great and that make fan signs worth it. So TLDR, fan signs are a lot like the internet. It's all about how you use it. There are a few people who do abuse fan signs. But the majority of the time, it's either used for good, for making the artist feel good, or it is enhancing your parasocial relationship in a way that makes you feel good. And as long as you're not out there hurting someone else, then what's the harm? Well, listeners, I hope you enjoyed listening to my Just Be Fan Sign experience. And now it is time for me to say goodbye, not just for this episode, but for good. In episode 22, I mentioned I was going on a break and maybe I'd come back, but doing the podcast wasn't bringing me the same amount of joy as it did initially. And in preparing this episode, I'm finding I really have reached just the end of this journey. So a big thank you to all of you who have joined me for these past 23 episodes, 24 if you go for the lost episode of the K-pop Hunger Games, which I highly advise because it's just silly and fun. 
So listeners, I wanted to give you a definitive ending to UnK Popular Opinions. A big thank you to everyone who's reached out during the course of the podcast. It's been great hearing your UnK Popular Opinions. Thanks so much for listening, and don't forget to keep questioning.